Okay. So I wanted to maybe watch a lore video, if y'all are up for it, about the Earthens, because they're so cool. And everybody thought that they were going to suck, but they're not suck. They're awesome. And everybody's playing them. Even the people that before were not excited, then they got excited later. Yep. So I was thinking it would be cool to watch it and learn and educate ourselves. This is from Platinum Wow. It's about Earthens. I can't hear shit. Oh, I muted the tab. Okay. Dornagal. Oh man, this city though. This little village, Freywold village, is about. Yeah! Oh man, I love that little village. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> ask the crystal ball. Let's ask it. Is it gonna be a good video? Without hesitation, yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. All right. Let's go. They are cool, actually. I'm serious. Okay. When the announcement of the War Within and the entire World Soul Saga happened, everyone I was there. Was I was there. Losing oh, yeah. it. Also, there's playable Irvin. Uh, who is excited for that? <laughs> That's true. It's true. <laughs> People are like, Oh, okay. Interesting decision. But will there, will there be elf earthen? Maybe rock elves, though? <laughs> I'll be honest, I wasn't excited either. But as I've played it was the experience, actually like I realized that the world building surrounding the earthen is actually. The video is quiet. Huh? Okay, let me see what I can do about that. Actually, pretty cool. How's Few that? Caveats I'll get into later in the video. But for now, let's delve right into their story. When we first reach the Isle of Dorne, our arrival isn't the smoothest entrance. Oh! And as we crash land on the continent and fight... That is even more quiet. Heck. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's make sure we can hear that fart sound as loudly as possible. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go back. And as we crash land on the continent and fight for it, when we first reach the Isle of Dorne, our arrival isn't the smoothest entry. Is this okay? Is that better? Because I already have him turned up all the way. Is this a little better? It's good now. Prince. Could still be louder. Okay. I got you. I don't know why things got so quiet. After I change my monitor, that's really weird. How's that? Could could you hear that? <laughs> okay. And as we crash land on the continent and fight for our survival, we are introduced to the Storm Ward, the leader of the <laughs> Earthen's military might. The Storm Ward is a badass. I didn't appreciate him the first time I met him. The edicts mandate that I defend the Corway. I must return to Dornigal. We are out of time. Come, let us get you on a storm rook. Sounds fine. Nothing says aerodynamic like a man-shaped stone on a bird made of angry cloud. <laughs> I don't remember him saying 
Did he really say that? in my oath sworn duty. Yeah. But wait, what is the core way? Quest How failed. did the earthen get here? What are the earthen? Uh, let's go back in time a bit and figure that all out. The background of the earthen starts like any other Titan forged race. They are robotic servants made by the Titan keepers to establish order on Azeroth. These earthen were sent to Kazel Gar to construct and protect something called the Coreway. This is a long network of tunnels that delve deep into Azeroth's core. But like all of the Titan forged races, the earthen were afflicted by the curse of flesh, albeit in a unique way. When we look at the other races on Azeroth that were turned mortal, like the humans, dwarves, and gnomes, we see they are now skin-covered flesh bags from the old god Curse. But that just isn't the case for the Earthen. Despite Yeah. Do they, they don't have the Curse of Flesh, and yet they still move around a little bit. If you don't know about the Curse of Flesh, what happened was the Titan Keepers had... um created their robotic servants to help them out and yogg saron found that they were like yogg saron found that it was kind of difficult to manipulate the robots and wanted to make them easier to manipulate and control and destroy and the way to do that was afflicting them with their uh, old god energy. So Yog saron inflicted them with the curse of flesh, which mutated them and transformed them into different types of creatures. So you had the big, the really big robot guys, um, like you might remember from Wrath of the Lich King dungeons, um, like the first boss of Halls of Infusion. Those type of guys got afflicted with the Curse of Flesh, and they changed into Vrykuls. And kind of similarly things happened to the dwarves. And with mecha gnomes, like, I mean, you know, gnomes, there was before clockwork gnomes, and then they also got afflicted and they turned into regular gnomes. But as it turned out, not being afflicted with the Curse of Flesh, I mean, having that affliction ended up being kind of a blessing and not a curse because it gave them freedom and it gave them more access to emotions and it made them a little bit more unpredictable. So being less tied to order gave them potential that they didn't have before, which results in the really cool people that we have around today. Did by the curse. It's <laughs> <laughs> a flesh, albeit yeah. in a unique way. When we look at the other races on Azeroth that were turned mortal, like from the humans, dwarves and gnomes, we see they are now skin-covered flesh bags from the old god Curse. Yeah. But that just isn't the case for the Earthen. So Despite what happened? being afflicted with the Curse of Flesh, they are still stoned as all hell. Yeah, why the are they rocky? The explanation for this is actually revealed to us in the Dragonflight expansion in the revamped Old Man Dungeon and a random book which explains that the transformation of the Curse of Flesh can be really diverse. The most bizarre fact is that some of the Earthen turned into the dwarves that we all know and love who right. live in Kazmodan and the Eastern Kingdoms. Right. And some others, like the Earthen and Kazel Gar, have retained their stony bodies, but given consciousness, and their culture has developed in an extremely similar manner to the normal dwarves, despite both of them never having any contact with each other. Both hmm. love to drink, both live in mountains, both call their lands Kaz, both have an affinity for rams and griffin-like beasts, and both have big bushy beards. Yeah. Well, I mean, dwarves gonna dwarf. Yes, even the female earthen have beards in biblically accurate Tolkien fashion. But they don't have beards that's as good as the male beards because you can't have a thick mustache like the males can, and that's some BS. But what? I don't want a neck beard. If I'm going to play the female earthen, I want a giant beard that's epic like the male. Why can't I have the giant beard? What the fuck? The, yeah, the only mustache you can have on the female earthen is like this little pencil, weird pencil mustache. I don't want that. What the hell? Makes me so mad. Beards in biblically accurate Tolkien fashion. Where's the, the mustache? Is, is dwarven culture some... Like, I want like that, okay? Even thicker and more bushier. An eight thing given to the earthen by the curse of flesh? Maybe, but there could be other factors at play here, and the Titanic watchers just don't have the full story. Maybe the Well, they're not completely the same because the earthen don't talk like Scottish or Irish people. 
black blood in the depths of Kazogar, Azeroth's world soul, or Belladar, or I don't know, something else has. So it is the curse of this? flesh, but they're know, still man. stony. I'm not a lore speculation channel. Don't look at me. <laughs> So back to us defending okay, the city. Anyway. We help repel the Nerubian attack. This is the first time the creatures have attacked for centuries, and during the assault, the coreway was damaged, blocking the earthen from traveling to the rest of the underground continent of Kazogar. Right. Which is kind of a big deal, because the entire reason for a lot of the earthen even existing is to carry forth the Titan's edicts of building <laughs> and protecting the coreway. Well, they didn't protect it. This we reconvene with the Earthen, who explained to us the existential crisis their society has been experiencing. The Titans uplifted four wards. The Stone Ward, the Storm Ward, the Council Ward, and the High Speaker to keep the Edicts I and build the Corway and its fortress, Dornigal. But the Titans left, and the Machines stopped the unbound abandoned the edicts and the high speaker retreated to the ringing deeps well i know that because so i read the quest of the earthen is fractured and at some point during the earthen's history their gods the titans had left which okay that's fine but wait it gets worse every like around i don't know five thousand years or so the earthen need to recharge they go to this place called the Awakening Machine to do it, but when an Earthen recharges, they lose all their memories. So in order to retain those memories, they extract them in something called a memory gem, upload it to another machine called the Archive, so then they can go and recharge, and go back to the Archive, and restore their memories. <laughs> so there's two integral machines to Earthen society, and yeah, both of them are broken. So basically they run out of battery, and they also run out of storage space. So they have to recharge and like download and re-upload to the new body once they are recharged. Presumably from the Sundering 10,000 years ago. And when we arrive to Dornigal, we try and figure out the details of this crisis the Earthen are currently in. So the Archive holds every Earthen's memories? Should have been a Nokia. Yes. Yes. It has been broken for millennia. That is why our numbers are dwindling and Earthen's memories are erased upon recharging. Hence the need to upload our memory gems to the Archive with each charge cycle. I should be writing this down. I'm standing here with a living relic. No offense. I am not offended. But we are unfortunately in decline. Without a way to recharge, we will eventually all enter stasis. When will that happen? Sooner for some than others. In the some next people already entered the stasis. We will all cease to function. They need a new power source. So let's summarize what's going on here. The Earthen have been cursed with free will. Their gods have left them. Some of their leaders have given up in performing their duties. And the machines built to maintain their continued survival are broken. Not to mention that far back in Earthen history, Watcher Dorn, the Watcher that was sent to babysit the Earthen, was kind of a jerk that made them fight each other to the death in pursuit of efficiency. And also, oh yeah, sometimes when an Earthen's directive was completed, they'd just send them back to the Awakening Machine to be unawakened. Your directive is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should deactivate yourself now. Getting laid off. So yeah, the Earthen eventually led an uprising and just killed Watcher Dorn. All in all, it has never looked, and it's currently not looking good for the Earthen. But despite all of this, the Oathsworn Earthen are continuing their directives given to them by their gods. But let me ask you this, if you were an Earthen who is cursed with free will, would you keep doing your mindless directives for gods who have seemingly abandoned you? No. What about after a hundred years? A thousand years? Ten thousand? At a certain point, you might say, you know what? This masonry bull I've been doing this for 10,000 years, and now that I'm not immortal, I want to start actually living my damn life. This is exactly what the Unbound did, and abandoned <clears> their <throat> directives given to them. That's probably what I would do. I would go live in the Freywold village and, like, just take care of the sheep that have flowers growing on them, and I'd water the sheep, and that would just be all I did. That sounds pretty good by the Titans, 
Many of these unbound are the Stonebound, the former builders of Dorne, and left to live capitalism. on the remote edges of the Isle of Dorne, and are consciously trying to ignore the programming <laughs> that still lingers within them. Communication in... Oh, oh sorry. <clears throat> Hello. The Unbound really are the chillest dudes in all of the war within. Instead of continuing their boring Titan directives, they're doing what they want, when they want. They're raising rock-covered mossy sheep, That's what I partaking said I in pottery, enjoying nature, and making molten mead from elemental fire bees in a particular love for Russian-inspired disco dancing styles. <laughs> Oathsworn and the Unbound are very broad categorizations of Earthen. Is that what that dance is? There are many smaller designated groups of Earthen too, like the Artisans, Peacekeepers, Stormriders, Freysworn, the Archivists, but arguably the most important are the Machine Speakers. It's always shocking to me whenever I'm in uh, Isle of Dorne and like you'll see some of these Unbound that are just straight chilling. Like that's all, that's all really all they do. They are actually the most relaxed people <laughs> in the entire expansion. And you'll be up there and you'll see them, you know, hanging out in the sauna and uh, just reading or whatever, taking naps under trees. And then you get on your mount and you fly like a little bit and you see the Arathi fighting for their lives <laughs> in like an absolutely horrific war against shadow monsters and Nerubians and Cobus and horrible things like beyond human comprehension. <laughs> So when I saw uh, some of the Arathi come up to chill in Dornagama, like, yeah, that makes sense. Like if I was them and I had a way out, I would get out as quickly as possible. I would immediately the leave. In the ringing deeps, the machine speakers are panicking. The speakers' edicts are to generate energy harvest material, and most importantly, maintain the Titan machines. Right. Meaning that all of Earthen society is relying on them to find a solution to fix the archive and the awakening machine. And uh, so far, they haven't been successful. They've made sure it was plugged in, turned it on and off multiple times, they've updated their drives, they've looked for a solution on a Reddit thread from eight years ago, and sent a help ticket to the Titans, and by Norgadon's nipple hair, we need to find a solution oh to this God. before it's too late. <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures, and the arrogant high speaker has begun to meddle with That's dark hilarious. influences to restore the machines and secure a powerful yet corrupted future for the Irvin. So players have to work with the Oathsworn and the Unbound and the Machine Speakers and reunite Earth and society, repair the core way, and figure out a solution to fixing their machines before it's too late. Spoilers here, but of course, yes, we reactivate the Awakening Machine, meaning that all the Earthen can recharge and also pull new ones out of stasis. And by the end of the main questline, Earthen society is reunited with a perspective shift of everyone doing the directives that they want to do. And they're all just called the Unbound Earthen now. United Earthen Society. And like I said, I love the world building Blizzard has done with the Earthen. You know, the Curse of Flesh is such an integral part to Warcraft's lore. Yeah. I mean, I think I mention it in some sort of capacity every <laughs> other video. And the story of the Earthen gives us such a good insight on the Siog Saran turning the Titan's robotic creation into a flesh. So you can see there's the rock part, but. No, it's changing to what the fleshy. transition from Titan creation to living being yeah. looks like. Obviously, the Earthen did not turn to flesh, but we can see the fracturing of their society as they deal with this new paradigm. There's so much attention to detail put into little facets of their lore. It's why the uh, dwarves have the racial ability stone form. It's because it's a callback to their heritage of being... Um, before they had flesh, when they were just rocks like robot people the earth and our rocks so their idea of relaxation involves soaking in baths and beds of heated burning coals <sighs> they can eat rocks and gems which change their physical appearance when they die they just turn into a giant pile of rubble in their inn they have traditional beds but they're only used by guests and they have cats all around their towns which help clear them of mice which is pretty cute they're cute there's baby. also some great side quests dealing with their decaying memory too there's one on the Isle of Dorne where you help oh, we know. who's losing. We know about Corgrin. <clears throat> I don't even want to spoil this side quest. 
You need to do it. I'm going to skip him talking about Corgan because you just need to do Corgan. Like, I'm not going to ruin that for anybody. Well, the Earthen don't have dwarven accents, which makes sense, I guess. And instead, they have these really flat, plain voices, which isn't entirely bad. But I do feel like they can be a bit of a hit or miss sometimes. <laughs> Our fans cheer for us, General Audemar. Oh, come on. This isn't a good example at all. You're in a theater event. It's supposed to sound like bad acting. It's the whole shtick. Come on. Yeah. Oh, wait. It says on screen, this voice acting is supposed to be bad. Yeah, so why are you using it? That's an example, Fenna. I thought about this. And yeah, of course, the the earthen do speak in a more monotone way than other people because they don't have they seem to not be as emotional as other races because the curse of flesh has afflicted them in an incredibly odd way um and the curse of flesh is generally something that gives people greater access to emotions but it seems like it didn't afflict them as much because obviously they're still made of rocks so of course, they shouldn't sound that emotional when they talk, but imagine how shitty the voice acting would be if they never had any emotion in any of the voice lines that they did. That would be really bad. Like, that would suck as an experience. So I feel like they did a pretty good job of making it, you know, just enough emotion, <clears throat> but not too much. We are the ward's top generals. Also, Ooh, the example. archive, the place where all Earth and Society uploads their memories, you know, you'd think it would be bigger than a closet with some fancy filing cabinets full oh of memory Oh my god, lastly, such, a, such a nitpick, are you kidding me? The biggest problem- They got more in the back, okay? They got filing cabinets in the back. The problem I have with the Earthen is that because they are a new playable race, they will be available to Alliance and Horde. Mention- what about the beards- what about the mustaches on the ladies, huh? Got anything to say about that? That's the problem. You need that's a bigger problem than they don't have enough storage space in their filing cabinet. And just from a fundamental standpoint of the Warcraft universe, on the concept of a dwarf walking around Orgrimmar makes me die a little inside. Look, what? I understand it makes sense lore-wise that the uh, horde helps in restoring uh, their society, but uh, quite frankly, um, I don't care. It's gross, and I'd much prefer if they were alliance only or just really not playable at all. And as much as I appreciate their lore and the world building Blizzard has crafted, that doesn't mean I'm going to play one personally. Oh gonna... my god. You made the video called Earthen are cool actually, and you're going to stick there at the end that you don't even think they're welcome in Orgrimmar. What the f? That's a take. Oh my god. <clears throat> Unbelievable. You know what? You sound exactly like those people that were so mad when they introduced Blood Elves to the Horde. And people had an absolute conniption fit about this. People were so upset saying, uh, hey, there shouldn't be any elves in the Horde. There should only be monstrous and scary and gigantic and beastly races in the Horde. There shouldn't ever be any elves in it. And people just lost their damn minds about that. Play a dwarf. I'm gonna play I can't believe that you I can't believe you're gonna say that the door should not be in the horde. There are there you're helping them. You're helping them. It's the whole normal one. So when I run up and I hit a mob, I go yeah! and I anticipate the rest of the player base probably won't play an earthen as a main character once the novelty of a new race wears off. Oh. What? What? Oh my gosh. Hey, who who agrees with that? Do we have earthen players that are gonna stay earthen? No, I have a pick rate. That's very similar. <laughs> like the e. Oh. Similar to mechanomes. What? Nobody plays. Me. What did you just Space say? Wears off, and they'll have a pick rate. That's very similar to mechanomes. Oh. <gasps> You take that back right now. Nobody plays mechanomes. 0.3%. <laughs> I can't believe Drakthir. So, Drakthir, we're going to pump up our numbers with the new classes coming out for Drakthir. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. 
can't believe he dropped all those bombs on me at the end of the video. It was such a good video, and you're telling me all about the earthen lore and how cool they are and how interesting, and then at the very end you're like, well, people probably aren't even gonna play them. People are probably gonna not play them that much. Well, I still liked the video, even though you had a lot of hot takes at the end. <laughs> you should have named the video Earth and Go Hard, actually. I don't think that he should have named it that. <laughs> I don't think... I think that's a horrible idea. <laughs> uh, uh, this was, It was nice, though. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> yeah, still a nice video. I'm just playing, of course. You know, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm picking. Because I know, you know, I'm not, I'm probably not going to play Earthen as a main race either. So I'm just, I guess I'm being contrarian at the moment. <laughs> yeah. That's a link to the video uh, from Platinum Wow. It was fun. It was a fun watch. It was good. <laughs>